Well, we're at this ED Falcon again. Actually, it's a Futura, but anyway. I thought I'd detail um, checking the coolant with a coolant hydrometer. So the first thing I'm going to do is just fire it up for just a few seconds, basically. It doesn't have to be running for very long, even though the thermostat's closed. They have a bleed hole and all that, so... And this is a self-bleeding cooling system, so it will circulate coolant. So let's turn it off. Because that's pretty much all I wanted to do, just make sure the coolant was thoroughly mixed. Just in case some of it's settled overnight or whatever. Let's open the bonnet. First thing to do is to locate your coolant cap. On this car it has an expansion tank which is pressurised at cooling system pressure. That's why there's no radiator cap on the radiator. This is a self-bleeding cooling system like I mentioned. If we stick this up here and zoom in, here's a radiator cap. Now before you take the cap off, it's always a good idea to sort of make sure the engine's cold like this is and give your radiator hose a squeeze and make sure it really is genuinely at zero pressure. Because otherwise if you take that cap off and it's hot, you can end up with all that boiling water coming out. Because the, the pressure will stop it boiling, but it might be sitting at 120 degrees or 110 degrees or whatever, and when you release the pressure, there's nothing to stop it boiling, so you'll end up with a geyser of boiling hot water. So let's take the cap off. You should always, when you take radiator caps off, to just take it to the first notch. Um, screw off caps are different because there's a lot more thread than there is rubber seal in contact, so basically before you get to the end of the thread, it'll let you know if there's pressure. But this type of cap, it has what they call the first notch, which is that. Push it down again and it comes off. This cap's actually a new one, I'd like to point out. Well, well, pretty new. It's in really nice condition. It's also a genuine cap. It's made by CPC, but these genuine caps are a lot better than the aftermarket ones that are made by the same mob. So what you want to do is put the hose in the bottle, basically. To me, it looks like the coolant's got basically no coolant at all. Just need to get more up in there. So we've overfilled it slightly, so what we're going to do, we're just going to um, let some out, get the bubbles out of it. So if we zoom back out again, I want to set this camera up here, because this tells you the boiling point and the concentration, basically. The idea is, if I zoom in again, this pointer up here shows you whether it's level or not, or straight I should say that. And there is some coolant in there, but not much. I mean, so it's showing zero on the scale. Freeze point, if we turn it over on the back. Um, we're showing a boiling point of 125 degrees C. Uh, and this thing isn't absolutely dead accurate, but... Yeah, you're supposed to run it to normal op temperature, but I, I don't want to end up with... Um, coolant everywhere but yeah obviously um, there's not much coolant in this um, you'd expect it to be quite a lot higher it, it'll tell you sort of um, there you go um, it tells you up here for 50% solution plus 50% water or um, for 265 degrees protection so I'm assuming that's in the Fahrenheit range, which is, so 265 is right there. So if it was 50-50, I'd expect it to go up. I mean, I ran it long enough to mix coolant a bit, so it's got some in there, but not much. And you can tell by the colour, it's very light, very light lime green, green cordial. And basically what happens is, um, it is sweet, by the way. You can actually taste test it, but remember, coolant's poison, so... You shouldn't be you shouldn't be taste testing it, but that's how to use a coolant hydrometer. It gives you the instructions on the back. Um, remove cap only when radiator is cool. Run engine to normal up temperature. Draw up fluid level to line. If dirty or rusty, which this obviously is dirty, um, draw and flush then refill cooling uh, cooling system. Tap lightly to remove air bubbles. Top of pointer must be vertical. Large pointer shows degree of protection. Flush with hot soapy water to rinse clean. 
Um, this is the, the gauge itself. Don't flush your cooling system with hot soapy water, but this gauge needs to be rinsed out thoroughly with hot soapy water, basically, and then rinse clean with water. So what you do with the sample is put it back in without immersing the hose again. And the basic reason for that is coolant is poisonous, and children and dogs will drink it because it, it's sweet. Um, so put replace your radiator cap. So what does this mean? Well, basically, if you buy a car and you have no idea uh, what you know how old the coolant is, you should be changing it anyway. But this will give you a ballpark figure as to how much coolant there is, and it may be that this cap, which has been replaced at some point recently, the old cap might have been a bit average, and it might have been just basically overflowing coolant out of the overflow hose, and they might have been topping it up with tap water. Because once you add coolant, you shouldn't need to add water to it much. I mean, if you're adding a little bit of water to bring it up to the um, maximum line, you know, you shouldn't need to do that every week, every fortnight even. Like, you really shouldn't have to add anything to it. Um, in this type of system, it's not like a car 30 years ago that, you know, it just had the cap and then the overflow and all that. This is This allows for expansion and stuff like that. So, you know, if, if you're putting water in it regularly, uh, and I mean honestly, I reckon you should be able to top it up with a 600 mil, you know, of water, you know, every month or two months. I mean honestly, when I've had cars that have been in good condition and the cooling system works properly, they don't need topping up. Like I don't need to. They might drop between, you know, you'd expect over, you know, months and months for it to drop maybe a little bit. But you wouldn't expect to need to put litres of water in it or even two litres because it means you've got a leak basically. Now also, if you do run coolant, that will show up a leak pretty quick because the coolant will stay in green. Uh, any leaks in the radiator core or around the block because um, the coolant itself, the water evaporates, but the coolant itself will be left behind. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to get these warm before you take a sample of coolant. And the reason why is to make sure it's all mixed um, thoroughly. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. Um, by the way, these are pretty accurate, um, and it does tell you you can measure it cold, just in case you doubt my procedure. Um, ideally, you should run it for five minutes, maybe ten minutes, and, you know, mix up the coolant better. I know that it doesn't really, it doesn't really separate out, but it's just a good idea. Um, the biggest point of running coolant in a car engine is to um, protect the alloy components particularly and even the cast iron components because they do rust and corrode and stop that happening which means it's going to keep your cooling system clean it'll extend the life of your head gasket if you run plain tap water you deserve what you get especially if you run an alloy head because aluminium alloy becomes a sacrificial anode it corrodes a, a lot more re readily than does cast iron so be aware of it even if you're running a real old car you should always run coolant no matter what so, anyway, thanks for watching.